God. Okay. So, what's up? I know y'all thought that I had like vanished from the face of the earth. Um, it, it, this is story time. So, if you hear anything in the background, I am actually driving right now. Um, I am on my way to... Continue on I-10 West. I am on my way to um, my cousin's house in Conroe, Texas to visit. Um, because I just need to get away for a little while. Um, okay, so this... <laughs> this past year has been rough. <laughs> rough. Um, so last October, I turned, on October the 5th, I turned 50. Yes, I am in that age range now. And um, I was always told you know, growing up by my great grandma and my grandma, how the older you get, the faster time flies by. And it is so freaking true. So true. Um, so when I turned 50, I don't know if I have a midlife crisis. I don't know. All I know is I was very, very, very unhappy with my marriage um, and had been for a long time. Um, I was trying to stick it out uh, because we had been married at the time, uh, 22 years. So, um, and my daughter, was a senior in high school. My youngest daughter was a senior in high school. So I didn't want to jack up her senior year. So I stayed another year um, because I had intentions of leaving when I, when I was the year before when I was 49. But I, I, I thought about her she's the most like me um she's tender-hearted um she takes everything to heart and i knew that she would be the most hurt in this situation so i, I stayed another year well i turned uh and the reason i let me let me say this um my marriage had turned into a um a roommate situation um, and I didn't want a roommate if I wanted a roommate I could have got a roommate I wanted a husband um, I'm the type of person that I like affection I show affection and I like affection back that's just how I'm a Libra what can I say um, and I was getting none of that no matter what I did and I tried I tried really 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 hard because I did not want to leave and have regrets <clears throat> that I didn't try hard enough so when I turned 50 on October the 5th I looked at my life and um I said, do I want to, you know, in a short 10 years, you know, because time goes by faster, in 10 years, I'll be 60. Do I still want to be in the same situation? And the answer was no. No. I refused to live my life feeling less than and um, 
it was scary. It was scary as crap. I had a job. I was working, but I wasn't making enough to support. The money that I made at my job was like uh, play money. I, I shopped with it. I did whatever I wanted to with it. It, it wasn't um, money that I had bills to pay out of. Uh, it wasn't um, a means of support. Uh, so when I made that decision, I, he left for work that morning at like 4.30. I jumped up out of bed. I began to pack everything that I could into my vehicle. Uh, I mean, like my vehicle. And it was just shit that made no sense. I packed stuff. I don't that I don't even know that I could have left. I, I just I wasn't thinking anything other than get it and go. And I, I I packed everything that I could possibly pack into my vehicle. I um, got dressed for work and I went to work and. I, I had called my daughter, my oldest daughter, and I asked her if I could come and stay with her. And I told her what I was doing, and she said, absolutely. So, that's what I did. And, you know, just like, and he's a narcissist, um, just like any narcissist is going to do. They turn it around. They're the victim. Uh, he smeared me all over Facebook. Uh, Continue straight for 20 minutes to I-10 West, entering Texas. He um, let everybody in our town know everything about our business and how much of a victim he was. And I, I kept my mouth shut. Um... I didn't say a word because I refused to um, participate in that shit. So, um, he told my kids that, because, so what happened was, we, when I left, we were in the middle of, um, <laughs> we were actually under contract to sell our house. Um, so the house sold, and, um, it was community property, but not only that, both of our names were on the, the title or the deed for the house. Um, so when it, it was time for us to go sign papers, um, they knew that we were going through a nasty divorce because it was nasty. And so they made me go sign first. And while I was there, I said, how are you going to do this? Are you going to make two checks out? Um, this was the title company that was handling the, the um, sale. And they said, no, there will be one check, but because... The way um, that we're doing this, we can't issue the check until all signatures are present. Well, they made me sign first. So, when he signed, he got the check. The check for $95,000. Well... informed him I wanted my half of the money and he informed me that he was we had been looking at a house a beautiful Victorian house um, that he was still going to buy that house um, and he needed me 
to sign a paper at the lawyer's office saying that he was buying that house with his own separate money so that I would have no interest in the new house. I said, I don't understand. I don't want interest in your house that you're buying. I just want half of my money from the sale of our house. Well, um, if you don't sign that paper, I can't get the loan to buy the house and the kids will be homeless. Do you want the kids to be homeless? He knew what buttons to push. Um, and, uh, I love my kids and my lawyer which was the crappiest lawyer ever um told me don't sign the paper she did tell me don't sign the paper and in my brain everything was screaming don't sign the paper police reported ahead but i was getting I, I can't even explain to you how many text messages, phone calls, emails, personal emails, and work emails over and over and over again how the kids would be homeless. Did I want the kids to be homeless? Now, the kids would not have been homeless because they could have moved in with his mom they could have moved in with his sister. I didn't have a place. That's why the kids stayed with him. And my kids are adults. Like my daughter at the time was 18. She was out of school. My oldest was 25. I was living with her and my son's 23. He was the house that um, we were supposed to buy that he bought had an apartment in the back and that's where my son was going to move into. Um, so I signed the paper. And when I signed the paper, I don't think that I realized that he was using 73,000 of that 95000 to put down on the house, which meant that I signed away $73,000. So, there was, what, 23000 left, 20-something thousand, I'm not good at math. Anyway, there's 20-something thousand left. Um, and he had no intentions of giving me that money. Um, he said that he needed that money, uh, also because, um, he was going to use that money for different things. Well, you know, um, <laughs> we'll see about that. So, it took a year. I filed... I, I, I retained my lawyer, I think it was November the 7th or 8th. I left on October the 17th or the 18th. I got the lawyer on like November the 7th or 8th. He hid out and didn't, um, like, so he couldn't get served. So he didn't get served until like December the 18th. Um, and the night that he got served, my youngest daughter called me hysterical, crying. In the background, I could hear him screaming, like screaming. And she was telling me, she was hiding in her room. She was telling me that he was threatening to kill himself. She didn't know what to do. She was scared. Uh, Police reported ahead. My son, so proud of him, um, 
was talking to him. You could hear him talking to him in the background. Um, I told her to pack her stuff and leave. He came, my son came into the room and told her the same thing. I've got this. Get your stuff and go. And she did. She left, went to her boyfriend's house. Um, I told her that I would take care of it. So I called the police department. I explained the situation to them. And I told them, I asked them to do a welfare check. Well, they go there. Pag's like, hey guys, what's up? Like nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Because that's what he does. And um, he continued to make posts on Facebook about dying. Watch out. Vehicle on shoulder ahead. Um, it just, it was, it was. It was bad. Uh, he tried to get me fired from my job. Uh, which ultimately I was. So, <clears throat> when he started trying to get me fired from my job, uh, I had just started talking to a guy. Um, and it's so funny, I I had dated this guy when I was 18 years old. We were both 18 years old. I dated him for a year. I never thought, I never forgot about him. I thought about him all the time. Every time I drive through the town that he lived in, I would think about him. Um, he was just one of those guys. And on Thanksgiving day that year, um, he sent me a text said that um, he had heard that I was going through a divorce. If I needed anybody to talk to, he was there. Um, and, and we started talking, and we talked. We went out. Um, that was on Thursday. We went out that following Tuesday, and we haven't quit talking since. So when I lost my job, I lost my job on Tuesday, on Friday, that same Friday, I totaled my car. Totaled it. Um, so I had no job, no car, no money. The car was in his name, of course. Um, he got a check for the car that was right at $9,000. He refused to give me that to get me another vehicle. So, the vehicle that I'm still driving now, uh, and that was in June, I believe, that that happened. Um, my boyfriend has a little work car, a little uh, Honda Civic that he would use um, to drive back and forth to work so he wouldn't take his um, he has a F uh, 250 King Ranch like nice truck and he doesn't like bringing it in the plants um, he does instrumentation at, in the plants and um, so he would use this little car you know to go back and forth to work well he gave it to me to use as long as I needed it um he paid all my bills for two and a half months because I had no money. None. And I, I seriously do not know what I would have done if I wouldn't have had him. Um, I didn't want to ask my parents. They're, on, they're both retired and on fixed income and and I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't ask them. I couldn't burden them with that. So, um, still, uh, we went to court finally on this past October the 13th. 
and I just received my official divorce papers. So I am a divorced woman. All of my stuff is still in storage. Um, that's why I haven't been making journals. I know that I had promised some people some journals and I'm so sorry. I have no place to, to unpack all my stuff. So it's all in storage. I've been living between my mom and dad and my daughter's house. Um, I stay a lot at my boyfriend's. Um, I got another job finally, uh, paying really good money. And <laughs> whoo, as my life goes, um, this past week, I walked out of that job. Um, I was asked, no. I was told to do something that was wrong, absolutely wrong. Um, I refused to do it. Um, I used some words that I will not use on here. Told them what they could do with that paper they wanted me to sign. And I walked out. So, I'm right back where I began jobless. I'm looking for another job. But the reason I'm headed to my cousin's house in Conroe is I need a break. I need a change. I need a break. Um, I fight with depression and anxiety so bad. I, I can't even describe what my anxiety has been like this past year. Um, if you've gone through a bad divorce, you know, I don't have to explain it to you. Um, but, you know, that's, that's where my life was. Did I think at 51 years old, I would be homeless and... <sighs> In the situation that I'm in, hell no. But I'm, you know, even the situation that I'm in is better than the situation that I was in. And I made the right decision. Um, I, I, I just believe I did. Um, I just, I miss y'all. I miss talking to y'all. Um, I wish, you know, that I could have my own place to where I could get all my journal stuff out because that was relaxing. It kept my mind busy. Um, I have ADD, so, you know, when you've got ADD, insomnia, anxiety, depression, you got some shit going on. Like, my brain goes a million miles an hour 24 7 so working on my journals was a way to focus on something where I wasn't thinking about other things so um yeah that's that's where I'm at guys <laughs> I'm trying my hardest. I'm trying my hardest not to lose my ever-loving mind. And I'm going to be okay. It's just going to take a while. I know that. Um, but I'm going to get off here and try to figure out how to upload this because I haven't done it in so long. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I'm headed to Conroe, Texas. Um, 
I don't know how long I'm staying. She said I could stay as long as I want. So we'll see. I will check back with y'all hopefully soon. And it won't be so depressing. This was depressing. But I wanted you to know that I haven't flaked out. I'm not dead. Nothing's happened to me. Um, well, yeah, a lot of stuff's happened to me. But nothing's, like, happened to me. Um, and I, I, I will try to do better and post some more for you. So... I miss you all dearly. Um, 